Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm continuing my work with the RP2350. The last couple times we've played around with Doom and got it to run without using VS Code. This time I want to explore a different type of output, the tiny SSD 1306 OLED display. It's been a rough couple weeks since my last video. I needed urgent eye surgery last week to repair a detached retina in my left eye. Part of the treatment is to fill the eyeball with sulfur hexafluoride gas, which distorts the vision. I'm grounded since any change in elevation will increase eye pressure and cause damage. And of course I'm tackling one of the world's tiniest displays while I can't see crap. Nothing's ever easy. The good news is I should be better in a few weeks. So why don't you join me as I learn more about the SSD 1306 display. I'd like to display bitwise data located in the RP2040 and RP2350 static RAM. At 128 by 64 pixels, the tiny SSD 1306 OLED panel is the perfect fit for my needs. This version communicates with the Pico using I2C. Even though the SSD 1306 is a monochrome display, this one has two colors, yellow on the top and blue on the bottom. I got two of them for about 10 bucks on Amazon. Each pixel of the SSD 1306 is individually controlled by a corresponding bit in the 1K of display RAM. The display is organized as 8 pages of 8 bits high by 128 bits wide. Each column of 8 bits is controlled by one byte of data. The least significant bit of the byte is at the top of the page, while the most significant bit is at the bottom. There are three different ways to write to the display RAM. Page addressing mode, horizontal addressing mode, and vertical addressing mode. The page addressing mode is kind of like random access, but it's more suitable for targeted data. The horizontal and vertical addressing modes are more of a streaming mode where large blocks of data can be easily transmitted at once. Other control modes allow sprite movement, scrolling, and brightness control. The SSD 1306 is extremely flexible, and as a result, it can be a bit cumbersome to use. However, Raspberry Pi has simplified the process by providing the example SSD 1306 underscore I2C in the Pico master examples directory. I'll start with that example and then Frank encode it to get what I want. First, I move the example to its own directory. I also copied over the Pico SDK import and Pico Extras import optional CMake files. Then I created a CMakes list file that only compiles this single example. I'll leave a link to all files in the description below. Basically, I combined the three CMake lists from the examples into one file and then removed what I didn't need. Note that most of this file has been commented out. The block comment syntax for CMake lists is hash double square brackets. I created a build directory for the RP2350 ARM and RISC-V cores and navigated into those using the developer command prompt. Then I used the following CMake command to populate the appropriate build directory. I've included a file with the CMake commands needed for the RP2040 and RP2350 ARM and RISC-V cores. Remember, to always start with an empty build directory before you run CMake, otherwise the cache will just recreate any error you're trying to fix. After the CMake command finishes, enter nmake. This will compile and link the file and create the UF2 file to download into the Pico. To use the SSD 1306 with the Pico, we'll need to wire up the I2C data, clock, and power lines. I connected the 3.3 volt power from pin 36 and the ground from pin 38 on the Pico to the module. I'll get the I2C data from pin 6 and the clock from pin 7. Now we're ready to try it out. As normal, plug the USB cable into the Pico with the boot select button pressed and drag over the UF2 folder into the Pico. After a moment, the screen will blink three times and then a short demo highlighting the text, line drawing, and sprite scrolling capabilities will start. Okay, let's figure out what we need. I want to create a mini blinking lights display similar to old school computers. This will include 
one 16-bit display and four 8-bit displays, complete with separators every four bits. I'd also like two four-digit and one two-digit hexadecimal display. Let's review how the example program works to help develop our strategy. At the beginning is the SSD 1306 initialization routine. This is not trivial. For instance, you need to set the size of the display, initialize the charge pump, set clock frequencies, addressing modes, and pre-charge periods. I'm not going to mess with this routine, at least not yet. Next are routines for displaying and scrolling the raspberries horizontally. The image of the Raspberry is included in the header file raspberry26x32.h. I don't need those routines, so I'll comment them out. There's also a routine for drawing lines from one pixel to another. I won't need this at this time, so I'll also comment that one out. The SSD 1306 displays only individual pixels. There's no built-in character set. The header file SSD 1306 underscore fonts dot h contains an 8-bit by 8-bit character map for uppercase letters and numbers. The example program uses a couple of subroutines to assemble a 1K buffer that contains all the bits and another sends the entire buffer via I2C to the SSD 1306 at once. This example uses the horizontal addressing mode as demonstrated by this simulation. Bytes are written into the buffer starting with the starting column. After one page is complete, the process wraps to the beginning of the next page. This continues until the end column is reached. For this demonstration, the starting column is at the top left and the ending column is at the bottom right. However, those columns can be wherever you want. To simulate blinking lights, I'll create two special characters, one for on and one for off. This allows me to write those symbols as a character string and will simplify mixing text and graphic. I also want to use a few other characters that are not included in the header file. So I decided to fill out the ASCII character set between the numbers and uppercase letters. I also added a few characters above the uppercase letters. This is where I'll add the special light on and light off characters. To make the characters, I drew an 8x8 matrix. The right side column and bottom row are left blank for spacing. Then I drew in the various characters in the matrix and converted each column into a byte with the least significant bit on top. I chose the caret to represent light on and the underscore to represent light off. For the initial attempt, I also used square brackets for lights on and off with separators in column 8. For a mock-up, I replaced the text with special characters. Here's the result. The square backup for the separators worked well enough for a mock-up, but they became cumbersome in practice, so I went in a different direction. I'll get into that in a minute. My next goal was to print a number, not just a text string. For this, I used the sprintf instruction in C. This can convert various number formats into a string which can then be manipulated and printed as needed. Here I display both integer and floating point values. Another goal I have is to read and write to specific Pico memory locations. For this example, I'll store the integer num into location 20030000 hex of the Pico's memory, read it back as num2, and then display both numbers on the SSD 1306. I'll initially set num and num2 to different values to demonstrate that the readback works. I'll create a pointer star pnum and initialize it to the desired memory location. I'll store num into the location pointed to by pnum and then immediately read the value back from memory and assign it to num2. I'll convert both integers into hexadecimal strings and then send them to the SSD 1306. Here is the result. Finally, I want to convert a number to the Blinken Lights equivalent. In this case, I'll set up a string array of 17 characters, one for each bit of the 16-bit integer and one for the ending null. Then I'll set up a mask with a 1 in the most significant bit. To isolate each bit of the targeted number, 
I'll AND the mask and then shift it right. If the result is zero, I'll enter an underscore to represent a light off. Otherwise, a caret for a light on. Then, before I send the character string, I'll add separators to three locations in the buffer by using this subroutine, which writes the byte ff hex to the appropriate page and column of the buffer. I also added some formatting to the top line of the display, where I mixed text with the numbers that I read from memory. As you can see, we can now read a character from memory and generate its binary representation. Of course, because this is risky business, I have to compile and run the demo on the Pico 2 Hazard 3 cores. Here you go. Thanks for joining me today. This time we dove into the SSD 1306 OLED panel. Even though it has limited capabilities, this little monochrome display simplifies character output for the Pico compared to video displays. I'm really excited about being able to output a binary representation of a number from the Pico's memory. I have some ideas on how to use this display in the future, so stay tuned. If you like this video or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!